Hi, Sandy here, and today we're going to create some watercolor gift bags for absolute beginners. Meaning we're making gift bags and then we're decorating them with some very simple watercolor painting designs anyone can do. You know, regardless of how skillful or not skillful you are. <laughs> Maybe you just love personalizing your gifts and the idea of making something unique to gift wrap your presents sounds like an awesome, fun idea. Or maybe you just really, really need a gift bag at the last minute and you don't have time to go out and buy one, so you just decide to make your own. Or maybe, you know, the idea of making your own gift bags just sounds like a lot of fun and a perfect excuse to practice your watercolors without adding on to your discarded watercolor pile. Whatever the case is, this video is for you. Okay guys, so the supplies you need are crappy watercolor paper or whatever paper you have that can hold some water. And this is important, if it doesn't hold water, it will be drenched and you won't be able to paint on it. And if you own some 140 pound watercolor paper, you can probably even make gift wrapping paper, which is really, really cool. Sadly, I don't. All my paper is 300 pounds, so that's not gonna happen. I'm using this very, very bad watercolor paper I got at Flying Tiger. Don't know if you remember that review, it's not very good, but for this purpose, I think we'll be able to handle it. <laughs> and let's face it, using 100% cotton paper for this is kind of a waste, unless the person you're gifting it to is the type that really, really values it. In which case, just go all out, they deserve it. Now I'm thinking I'll also use this Winsor & Newton watercolor paper, just because I don't have Kenson anymore and I need a sheet of paper that's actually larger than the Flying Tiger one. Okay, so watercolor paper or paper that can hold a lot of water, watercolor paints, and this can be anything you want, okay? Today I am using a set I haven't used in a long time, even though I love it, my Mungyu watercolor set, because the colors are just so vibrant and so happy. Now, Kuretake Gansai Tambi would be a really good choice too, because you want less transparent, more vibrant paints to make your job easier, but any watercolor set will do, okay? Just don't overthink this. It will look really, really cool no matter what you use. Also, we will need some sort of glue or tape or even a stapler if that's what you have on hand. And maybe a scissor? Hmm, not sure, but best have one at hand, okay? Oh gosh, all of this is definitely bringing me back to the channel's first days. Have you watched any of those videos? This was exactly the kind of thing we did, so I'm very, very excited to join crafts with watercolor. Had to happen sometime, really. <laughs> now, I'm making these gift bag designs from scratch, but a really cool, really awesome thing you can do is pick some of your own paintings. You know, those pieces we're not gonna frame or do anything with, and you know, just put them to good use. You can use those paintings to make gift bags and offer them to loved ones. How cute and special is that? <laughs> so let's just start with a cute, simple design. And we'll start small, okay? Do not worry. <laughs> Okay, so this is the sheet of paper I'll be using, I have it right here, and for starters, I'm just going to wet this paper and make some value scales. Like, you know, those really pretty ombre patterns when you start light and go dark, or start dark and go light? That, for wrapping, is kind of perfect. <laughs> Let me show you. Now, this is actually a glued block, so it's one of the few things it has that's actually positive. So, I don't need to tape it onto anything. Just need to make this nice and wet. How simple is this? Now, we wait for it to dry, or we make it dry with a heat gun like me, because I'm impatient. <laughs> okay, this is nice and dry, and we could just leave it as is, but I'm thinking if we add a second layer, just like the first one, but horizontal instead of vertical, it will look really, really cool when you close down the package, and uh, that way we can get all the colors. Okay, let's see how that goes. Okay. 
Okay, so now that this is nice and dry-ish, <laughs> let's make the package. So this is the front, this is our back, and first things first, we need to find the middle of our yeah, the middle of our page, and now we fold it a little bit over what the middle of our page was. So what we're doing here, we're trying to close it into a tube, first of all, okay? So we found the middle, now we're overlapping our sides, our edges, just like so, into a tube. How gorgeous is this? <laughs> so now we go ahead and add some glue. Not too much glue, because we don't want it to glue in the inside. Now we wait for it to dry a little bit, we pressure it a little bit. Okay, we can already tell this is going to be absolutely beautiful. So now we need to pick which side will be the top and which side will be the bottom. And I think I want the darker side for the bottom, so the purple for the bottom. This is nice and dry. So now we're just going to fold this bottom about three fingers or so, something like this. It's completely up to you for the size, for the depth. We're deciding essentially how deep will the package be. We need to fold this in on both sides. Yeah, this is much easier to do with paper, let me tell you. <laughs> I will be using this tool to assist me, but you can use like a ruler or your fingers or whatever works for you, okay? So the front will look like this and this is the back. We need to make sure that as we fold the top and the bottom, it goes over the middle, okay? So one will be like this. So that's one and the other will also go, still not very dry, but that's okay. And the other goes like this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to glue again these little side triangles first. So this goes in like this, and then this triangle goes in, but so does this little top. And we just, whoops, too much, and we just fold it in and we press. Now guys, this is what we got. This is nice and dry. Uh, here is our bottom. And if what you have to give trap is, you know, uh, isn't very deep, you can just put it inside and call it a day, but we're not doing that. We are going to add some depth to the sides, okay? Now, as far as the colors go, I'm very happy. I think this is gorgeous. If you want to add something else, you know, some doodling, some splatters, go ahead. In fact, you know, for every uh, design we're going to make today, you can always, always add doodling or splatters, okay? That goes without saying. Everything looks better <laughs> with the splatters. We're just going to fold this over, making sure it matches that little side seam over there. And again, I am using my tool. You can use you know, your fingers, a ruler, a blunt, you know, knife or cutting object. Um, so we're just going to make this little And now we're going to open it up again and see what we have. Because now comes the time where we want to make the folds in the direction we need them. So this one, so this is good. This one is on the wrong side and so is the middle fold. We want it to be like this. Let me do it again. So you open this up, we want is to make an inside fold, something we can just close. And here is our deep, lovely ombre packet. 
Now we can finish this bag any way we want it, okay? We can add a couple of holes, put some thread or ribbon through them and make a bag or we can just fold it over like this. So now we come here, we add a little bow. may want to double knot it if it's very unruly going all over the place, but mine is actually behaving. <laughs> we trim off the excesses and this is what we've got. And you know what? Let's just make another pattern for this cute gift bag. I just love this design so much. And now we are making some really, really simple strips. And you can make these straight, you know, vertical and then horizontal, or you can make them diagonal. And you know me, I always prefer diagonal strips. <laughs> Now, don't worry about making them very straight. In fact, you can purposefully make them wonky and they'll still look really good. <laughs> Let's see what we come up with. And we just keep going. Let's pick other colors. And now we make it dry. And I'm loving these little details the bleeding I like that very much and now before we're done I am just going to be adding some metallic paints to this one because it just works really really good together and it adds that extra little spark So this is what we're working with. Can you see the metallic colors? Isn't it cool? And here we have it, our nice little packet, all nice and done. And be honest, when I was painting it, you thought it would look much worse than it actually does, don't you? Look at those metallics shining. How cool is that? <laughs> Okay, let's move on to a different pattern. Now, if you've watched my last video, you know I love making night skies and galaxies and stuff like that. And that's something that looks so complicated is in fact just wet out wet blooms layered on top of each other. So let's do that. <laughs> now, I'm going to start by wetting the paper like I've done so many times. I'm using the Windsor and Newton paper right now, and I'm actually going to do it on two sheets of paper. I've glued the two sheets of paper together because I want this to be a big one. Okay, so now we need to make this dry before adding our stars, which we will do with splatters, of course. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, not as detailed as I would have done it if it was a painting, not gonna lie. As you can see from my last video, it's 
quite different than what we have here. It's also a little bit lighter than I would have liked, but um, I'm okay with that. I really am. Because now come our splatters and hopefully, 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 it is dry enough not to absorb all the white we are going to add to it. That's better. Okay guys, so this is nice and dry. I'm happy, I'm happy with the splatters. I think it looks really, really cool. So now what we're going to do, first of all, is to fold it over by our crease. And this way we actually have this one that we are going to fold and glue as well. Oh, some bits here are still, yeah, my hands are kind of going white. My table too, not a problem. So first step is to glue and make a two out of our little package. So I think I'm going to fold this like three, yeah, three here and three over here as well. We want this to be as similar as it possibly can. Oh, look at this table, it's a mess. But that's okay. When I do this in paper, it's much easier to make sure they're equal. I just need to fold them in half and find out. Here, it's not as easy. If the splatters, the metallic splatters look really, really cool. So this is the depth of what we are using. So yeah guys, this is our cute little packet ready to go. Our little galaxy looking oh so cute. I absolutely love it. <laughs> okay guys, now for this next one, I will also be using two sheets of paper because we are making an actual gift bag, you know, a real bag with handles and all that. So let me just start by gluing these two together. Okay, so for this next one, uh, we are going to draw some simple flowers, some really big ones, okay? And then uh, we will just paint them with the brightest colors we can find. Now guys, this is what we've got. Is it the most, you know, subtle <laughs> of painting I have ever done? Absolutely not. Will it work fantastically well as wrapping paper? Yes, yes it will. Because now we are going to add, now that this is nice and dry, we are going to paint the background in something dark, something dramatic. Now, needless to say, you can make different paintings for each side, but I just love it like this. Uh, so I think, you know, both sides being equal works really well. Okay, guys, so let's do our dramatic background.
Okay guys, so this is nice and dry and looking very rustic and I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> okay, so now we start to assemble. We just need to fold it again and make a two like we've been doing so far. Okay, so now and now we need to wait for this to glue, but so far I'm loving the pattern we've created. Now that this is all nice and dry, we just need to make the sides. You know, we need to decide how deep we want these sides to be, and I'm not going to make them very deep because, you know, let's be honest, it's not a lot of paper. So, something like this. Yeah, I think this is a really good bag. So now we just fold this in the middle because we want our bag to close. And I think it would be actually the easiest way. We just could just cut and fold them in. And I think that's exactly what we're doing actually to keep it simple. So we need it to be somewhat in the size. So one. And one again. And that way, what we do is let's just fold them all in. Okay, now let's unfold them and glue them all together. So, I'm going to add a drop of glue to this side and this one. I'm just gonna glue them to this and then I'm just going to add more glue over here and then fold it in. And now I want to be able to press it down and we can just go ahead and fold this like this to make it easier to dry because that's how, you know, how bags are usually stored, right? Okay, so this is nice and dry. Let's open our bag up and see. This is really, really cute. Now, we just need to make two punch holes on each side. And I'll be honest, I have no idea where my punch hole is, so I'll just use this really old, really, really old punching tool, I hope. It can deal with, you know, thick watercolor paper. Okay, one down. Yeah, you may want to measure this. I'm not going to. I'm just going to be really, really rebel about it. Oh, I think it worked. Okay, guys, final step. We get a rope or a ribbon. This is what I'll be using. And of course, it's too big for the hole I've made, because I like to make life complicated for myself. We just do a knot. You can add a little bit of glue to this knot. If you're afraid it will you know, unravel, you can actually burn it if you want. That's another way to make sure it won't unravel. But, uh, I think I'm good here. And here we go. A little bag ready to go. And how cute and how easy was this to make. Okay guys, our next project is a box. So we need a lid and a bottom box, right? So here we have it, a paper for the top and a paper for the bottom a box. And now what we need to do, first of all, is make these squ into squares. Okay guys, so here's the paper we will be using for our box. And this is also a pretty straightforward design. It's circles or bubbles or whatever you prefer. We just paint circles in all different colors. The size is completely up to you. You get to decide if you want them to bleed or not, if you want them to even touch or not. It is your box, your call, okay? One. Two, yeah, I'm going to need to tape this one.
Now, if you want this to be a taller box, just divide the square into like nine squares, fold the corners in, glue them or staple them, and that's it. But I'm going to make an origami version, and this is how I do it. Okay, so, first things first, we fold this in half. And in half again, just like so. Don't mind my paint colored hands. <laughs> okay, and now we go to the middle with all our, all our ends. So this one is here. Again, much, much easier to make with craft paper or origami paper. Now we just fold it over. One and uh, two. I should probably be scoring this, but what the heck? Let's just well score. One and two. Oops. And three. Oh boy. And three. And four. Again, do it with the ruler or something like that. Okay, so now, so, yeah. these are all. For me, it's easier if you score them all before you start closing them in because. We will be needing that space. So, like this one. It's always been helpful for me when I'm doing origami to do all the four sides at once, than to just do one at a time and then needing to go back. Okay, guys, so this is what we have, right? Start folding these all together to make it easier to fold, particularly considering the kind of paper we're using. Okay, hang in there. This looks like crap right now, but it won't in just a second. Yeah. So there's one. We want to score this, of course. And three and four, and all of these nice and stuck. So, this is our box, and let's see if this fits. And it does. <laughs> Here we have it our cute little watercolor box all nice and personalized just add a ribbon around it and you're good to go and that's it guys we are done with our gift bags and i'm loving what we've made together i hope you do too i could be here all day there are just so many different stuff we can make i guess i'll just have to make more gift bag videos to make them all <laughs> thank you for doing this with me and i will see you really really soon bye bye